Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is Dracula 2000. Now, all this week, I have been reviewing movies, um, I have been reviewing different incarnations of Dracula, like I've been reviewing different Dracula movies, like Nosferatu, um, the 1931 version of Dracula, um, I reviewed the... I've reviewed two of the Hammer Dracula films, and um, I've reviewed the Francis Ford Coppola version of Dracula, and I've reviewed two movies that aren't technically Dracula movies, but they are inspired by Dracula. Um, I've reviewed Salem's Lot and Fright Night, so all this week I've been reviewing different movies that are um, either based on or inspired by the novel Dracula by Bram Stoker, so um, I decided to review this movie. Um, now, this is definitely, out of all the Dracula movies, movies I've reviewed this week. This is definitely probably um, the weakest out of all the films I've reviewed this week. Um, you know, this is um, really not that... Gr this really isn't a great movie by any means, um, but this movie does have some really interesting ideas in it, though. Um, it's not a great movie, but it does have some really cool ideas, um, but unfortunately they're not very well executed, um, you know, but I will give the movie kind of a pass only because of some of the ideas that are in this movie. Now, basically Dracula 2000, um, basically the plot is about a man named Matthew Van Helsing who claims to be the um, grandson of Abraham Van Helsing, but you soon find out in the movie that he actually is Abraham Van Helsing, and it turns out that a hundred years ago he managed to stop Dracula and he's now and he's now imprisoned Dracula inside this coffin and he keeps the coffin hidden in like a vault and what happens is um, basically Abraham Van Helsing has actually been injecting himself with Dracula's blood and this has allowed him to live over a hundred years and that is a really far-fetched premise but um you know, but it is somewhat interesting, I guess. Um, you know, but basically what happens in the movie is these people um, end up robbing the vault that Dracula's coffin is um, hidden in. And what happens is they end up resurrecting Dracula. And then Dracula, of course, turns them into vampires. And what happens in the movie is Dracula ends up going after um, Van Helsing's daughter. And basically his... His daughter is like having dreams about Dracula. Um, you know, now it's not a very, it's not really a great movie, but it has some really interesting ideas in it. Like, um, I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, you know, the idea that uh, Van Helsing is basically making himself live forever in order to um, make sure Dracula never comes back. I thought that was an interesting concept. Um, now, one concept that's presented in this movie that I actually thought was actually very original. Um, now, in this movie, they actually tell you where Dracula came from. Now, in most incarnations of Dracula, um, they never actually tell you where Dracula came from. In the Francis Ford Coppola version of Dracula, Dracula. Um, in that one, they do tell you where Dracula came from. In that one, it turns out that Dracula was actually Vlad the Impaler. But this one actually, um, in this Dracula movie, they actually give another origin to Dracula. And it's something I've never seen done before in a movie. And um, that's why I'm giving this movie a pass, because I found it to be a really interesting idea on who Dracula is. Um, um, in this movie, um, basically you find out in this movie that Dracula is actually Judas, the man who betrayed Christ, and it turns out that because he betrayed Christ, um, God punished him by turning him into a vampire, and, you know, so I thought that was a really interesting idea, the idea of Dracula being Judas Iscariot, um, I thought that was a cool idea, so the movie has some interesting ideas in it, but 
Unfortunately, it's not that great of a movie, though, because um, it's not very well executed. Like, the thing I didn't like about this movie is besides um, the Van Helsing character and besides, like, um, his daughter, um, really the rest of the characters in this movie I thought were really annoying, actually, and um, really most of the acting in this movie I wasn't really that impressed with. Um, now, Christopher Plummer actually plays Van Helsing in this movie, and he actually does a pretty good job in the movie, um, and even Ger Gerard Butler actually plays Dracula in the film, and um, he's actually not bad as Dracula, but, um, you know, besides them, most of the acting in this movie, um, really isn't that great, and, um, you know, it's just really not that great of a movie, but um, I will recommend the movie only because it has some really interesting ideas in it, though. Um, now, this movie actually had two sequels made to it. I've seen bits and pieces of the second one, um, and, that, and then there was a third film in the Dracula 2000 series, which I haven't seen yet, but I actually do want to see that one because one of my favorite actors, Wrecker Hauer, actually plays Dracula in one of the sequels which were made to this. But, um, yeah, now the movie... Uh, what was I going to say? The movie's actually directed by Patrick um, Luster, and Patrick Luster also directed um, directed The Prophecy 3, and he directed the My Bloody Valentine remake. Um, uh, yeah, and, and Wes Craven actually works, was one of the executive producers for this movie. Um, but yeah, it's really not a movie I can recommend that much, except for its cool premises. Um, besides that, it's not that great of a movie. Um, but yeah, that's my review on Dracula 2000, and bye.